Your name may be costing you a job. Today, we are discussing new economic research on names and how they impact your career. Have you ever wondered why I go by Dr. A? Well, we'll get into the economics of it. At the end, I will tell you my personal story, so stay tuned. And if you're new here, go ahead and subscribe, like, leave a comment. I recently read a fascinating study that finds that your success in the job market is influenced by how easy it is for others to pronounce your name. The study titled, How Do You Say Your Name? Difficult to Pronounce Names and Labor Market Outcomes. This paper is well done and its findings provide evidence of discrimination in the labor market. We have previously discussed discrimination based on beauty on this channel. This area of discrimination is slightly different and it's called discrimination based on name fluency. Let's discuss the research. The authors analyze 1,500 economics PhD job candidates, primarily focusing on how native English speakers perceived the pronunciation of the job candidates' names. Shockingly, the study finds that candidates with difficult to pronounce names had a 10% lower chance of securing academic or tenure track positions. Individuals with more difficult to pronounce names were often placed in less prestigious uh, institutions. In this research, the team collected data from economics PhD candidates who were on the job market in 2016 to 2018. They handpicked their CVs. They picked from the top 96 economics doctoral programs as ranked by US News and World Report in 2017. So that's the sample. Let's talk about name fluency data. To identify name fluency, they use several methods. First, they use a computer generated algorithm that assesses the difficulty of pronouncing different words. The second method, is a rating based on the median time it takes people to pronounce a name. They paid people to pronounce a name and time them. Three, a subjective measure based on three independent raters. So now we know the sample, we know how they measure the difficulty to pronounce. Let's talk about job data, which is a big component of this research. Job data was categorized into three different categories, academic, government, and think tank positions. Rankings of jobs was based on research productivity of the institution that people got jobs at as listed on research papers in economics database, which is really where we go for rankings of departments. Institutions ranked in the top 6% were assigned a productivity score of 400. Institutions in the top 8% a score of 600. In the top 9% score of 700. And in the top 10% a score of 800. All other institutions not within the top 10% received a score of 1,000. When assessing academic positions, only candidates placed in tenure track academic positions from institutions in the top 10% received the corresponding score, while candidates placed in non tenure track positions or postdocs, fellowships, are assigned a score of 1,000. For individuals going to the private sector or with missing job information, they imputed the score to be 1,000 to maximize the number of observations in the sample. Obviously, this is, this is an area that we could define differently, but this is how they went about it. Let's talk about the results. People with harder to pronounce names are 10% less likely to land an academic job, and when they do, they land lower ranked positions. The novelty of the paper, which economists, we love to show how novel or original research is. Let me tell you why I like this paper. First, although there is research on name discrimination, this one examines name fluency discrimination, a different version of name discrimination. The methodology does not rely on fictitious applications, but actual names of employees and resumes. It also focuses on hiring outcomes, not just callback rates, which is the usual method in this line of research. Finally, they identify several ways to measure pronunciation difficulty. The authors suggest one potential solution to address this bias is to remove names from resumes during initial evaluation process, ensuring that candidates are evaluated solely based on their qualifications. This can help reduce the, uh, the name-based discrimination in the job market. Let's talk about other papers in this area that I like. So other papers that examine name discrimination, one of my favorite articles examining the role of names on job market outcomes is the Bertrand and Mullenathan 2004 paper. That paper is an experimental design and found that white sounding names receive 50% more callbacks than otherwise similar applicants with African-American sounding names. 
This deserves a whole video in itself. If you're interested, leave a comment and depending on your interest, I'll create that video. So let's talk about why I go by Dr. A. And this is the personal component of this research. Early in my career, I had students tell me that they had a hard time pronouncing Dr. Al Bahrani. And at times it would stop them from visiting my office or asking me questions. I also had another problem. Students from Arab countries referred to me as Dr. Abdullah, the conventional Arab way of using doctor followed by the first name. When these two populations were in the same setting, my American students had a hard time using my name and they would get confused when my Arab students referred to me by my first name. A group of students started referring to me as Dr. A to simplify the process and the rest is history. Today, my parents, my colleagues call me Dr. A and this channel is named after that. Some people, as the, is the case with everything, are not happy that I changed my name and as they say, gave it into name fluency frictions. However, the data is clear. Economically, Dr. A is a better choice because discrimination exists in the market. And this is the takeaway. The takeaway is that names matter and bias exists, whether it's explicit or implicit, and it impacts market outcomes. Here's more evidence that markets do fail and some sort of intervention might be required or regulation. So that's the beauty of economic research. If you love economics, then you really want to know how to do this research. And if you're interested, reach out to me. We have the Hale fellows who are always working on research with me. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe uh, for more content like this. Thank you for joining us. Once again, my name is Dr. A. See you all next week.